hard to believe it's been 15 years. Cannot believe how quickly the time has gone by. This is not, does not seem like 15 years. It's amazing how many thrilling memories happen at a ballpark. Feels like the drive's been here all my life. Just to know that it's been here for 15 years and, the, and what it has done for the community is just wonderful to me. My goodness, where has the time flown? Um, 15 years is a long time by a lot of measures, but uh, when I look back at, at Greenville and the drive and when we started, it quite honestly, it seems like yesterday. Um, the seasons all just kind of go by in a blur and it's just been a, a wonderful journey and kind of can't wait to get started. A lot of people who are not native Greenvillians don't realize that we've always had a baseball team or presence and baseball was just the game in this community all of our lives. I was kind of very impressed and surprised at how much baseball heritage was in Greenville. Well, it speaks so well of the ownership that from the very beginning, and they did just willing to do everything right to be a good part of the community, to be a true partner, building a mixed use stadium, um, building it with us, again, with a style and design that just fits Greenville and fits the West End. So it really is catalytic for what else has happened. And then the full embrace of the baseball community and history of Greenville, uh, really from the very beginning, from the opening game with Shoeless Joe in person <laughs> coming back uh, to the commemorations uh, inside the stadium uh, telling the story of baseball in Greenville. Uh, there's never been any running away from it or trying to be separate from it. It's always been a full embrace of the, of the whole heritage and the story of baseball in Greenville. Sometimes the when you're most disappointed and sometimes the, the deals that you don't do are actually the best deals. You don't really realize it at the time, but when we bought the team, it was in uh, Columbia, South Carolina, and uh, we worked very hard for two years with the university, um, with the city, um, to build a shared use uh, ballpark. And um, we had an MOU, a memorandum of understanding with the university, and everything was all set. Brought it back to the, to the city, and the city had lost its resolve to to fund the park and we were pretty disappointed and that was September of 2004 and just at that time um, the Braves decided to leave town after they couldn't get a stadium built here. At the uh, other little stadium not far from my house etc for years and so um, we've always had baseball somewhere near downtown or in downtown so uh, it's uh, this just added uh, life to to our area um, because when the Braves left it was it left a void, but I really think that um, they didn't have the they didn't have the heart of the community like the Greenville Drive has. Um, I guess because of the location, a lot of people from this community couldn't get to them. Uh, so, but the Greenville Drive being downtown, oh wow! I mean, I mean, it's family. It's just it's basically family. There were the spinners at Meadowbrook Park and the Phillies over at Duncan Park. And, uh, and the Braves have been there for 22 years at Municipal Stadium. And then you had the college programs with their great success, Clemson and USC and others. And um, you had all the great high schools programs and then the tournaments that come along. So there was a, there was a heritage and a legacy of great baseball that we knew we had to um, satisfy and meet up to. The Greenville Braves had not been really part of Greenville at all when I first got here and, and I sort of experienced 20 years of, of the Greenville um, the Greenville Braves and um, you know being new to the community it was it was hard for me to assess really the impact that the the Braves had had on Greenville it was just always part of Greenville um, but you know I knew that, that this was a baseball town uh, it was certainly an Atlanta Braves town um, as close as, as it was to Atlanta and um, you know some of the some of the biggest Braves players were coming through here, and so um, the Greenville Braves was very much a part of you know the the uh, the activities and events, sporting events, things to do in Greenville. But you know I think it was obvious, or at least the city made it made it apparent fairly quickly that if the Greenville Braves were to leave, Greenville had a lot of other options. I'll never forget the day the Greenville Braves announced that they're leaving Greenville. It was one of the lowest days for any of us at, the, at City Hall. There was a signal that uh, the time was coming uh, for a decision to be made. So when the Braves, when the decision was made, I was very much more informed than the average person. But uh, I would say it, it, it was obviously of great concern that we'd be without a baseball team. We um, had a conference call 
with all city council sitting around a table. It, it's a classic photograph. I can show you the picture. Everybody has a look on their face. It's just, it's just so miserable. <laughs> As we're hearing the, the news that the Braves are leaving, we're trying to put a good, a good uh, spin on it, if you will. Uh, but the truth was we were just devastated. After years and years of negotiation uh, with the Greenville Braves to lose the team just seemed like the, the lowest point. Everyone was quite sad. Uh, but uh, Ed Jensen, of uh, claim to fame later with the Greenville Drive as the announcer and such, Ed uh, was there as a reporter with WORD and he pulled me aside after the announcement and said, don't worry, a lot of teams across this country are going to want to come to Greenville. I recall that there was, um, at some point, there was some public discussion of several different teams and frankly two or three different locations where the team might build a stadium. Um, I think one was even more towards Malden, maybe on, uh, or, or towards Greer on I-85. Um, so I knew that, I think the city was, was fairly open and transparent about a number of teams that were in the vying that were interested in doing it. We were one of three teams competing for the territory, and as I like to say, and you've heard me say, is that we were the only ones aggressive enough and or goofy enough to uh, say, well, if the city would give us the land that we would privately build a new downtown ballpark and uh, that was really the, the origin of, of Floor Field. It, it did take the city and minor league baseball about nine months to figure out that that was a, a pretty substantial beneficial offer. We believed truly that uh, as we learned more and more about uh, the what became the, the drive or the, the Boston Red Sox team and uh, the Craig Brown group that, uh, that we had a really good shot at bringing a fantastic team and a fran fantastic organization to town. I came up to uh, the mayor's office uh, after, that, uh, after that announcement and my phone was actually ringing. This is when we had phones back then. And I picked it up and it was a, a friend of mine who had an association with uh, the Columbia Bombers, uh, which would become the ownership group, was the ownership group later for the drive. And uh, his curious phone call to me was, I have a message from the owners of the, of the Columbia Bombers baseball team, and the message is, don't make any decisions. <laughs> As if we were going to make the decisions on a team. And I said, well, that's very, he said, they're very interested in talking to Greenville. And I thought, wow. And I hung up the phone, and I thought, well, Ed Jensen had just told me that we're going to be actually sought after, after being kind of put, brushed aside by the Braves. And um, so that was so amazingly encouraging. And that, and that was the story. For the next uh, six months or so, uh, minor league baseball teams across the country uh, suddenly, suddenly were in contact with us. Suddenly people actually wanted to come to Greenville and uh, they actually wanted to participate in the building of a new stadium. Uh, that was something we had never heard before. Uh, but it was very exciting and very encouraging. Then we had a new dilemma on our hands, like who to choose? You know, we, we were courted by a number of teams. Um, and some of them came, you know, they all came up here for interviews and uh, certainly, we, we made a good decision. We, we chose the right group, and of course, it was the ownership of the, the, uh, the Columbia Bombers at the time. There was significant controversy when we revealed the name. Um, a lot of people like a name like, you know, the Indians or the Yankees or the Red Sox, uh, because that's a thing, and the drive is not so much a thing. Um, but there are plenty of teams in Major League Sports that are like that, the, you know, the Utah Jazz and other teams do that. Um, but a lot of people had a hard time swallowing the name uh, The Drive at first, but as they got used to it, as they saw how we were kind of using it, as it became more and more ingrained in the community, I think now it's taken on a life of its own and we don't hear anybody complaining about it anymore. Well, we didn't want to be trivial. We didn't want to be cute. We wanted to be substantial. We wanted to be relevant and significant. And we wanted the, the fans to own the name Drive. What was interesting when we revealed the name was, was that the Greenville News got more negative letters about the name, they said, than any other subject matter they, they had ever written about. And I suppose a lot of people just kind of had reservations about whether the drive was going to catch on and how that would roll off the tongue or how that would work when referring to the baseball team and the players. We were engaged, members of the community, members of the chamber were in, you know, invited to you know, the, the process of of uh, deciding on the name for the drive, and uh, I remember that meeting too. And Craig, uh, Craig was was uh, uh, was there and nervous uh, as you know, a marketing guy. Uh, I knew that he came from a advertising background, so he was very key and uh, and 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 capable of 
of, of, of really deciding uh, uh, appropriately, you know, a name that he'll live with from now on. We announced at the Upcountry History Museum, had all the community and business leaders and champions in the, in the room. And uh, yeah, it was pretty uh, exciting or pretty, I should say, telling that uh, the reaction was not universally positive. You know, baseball is about traditions and traditional names of baseball teams end in an S or an X and this one didn't and you couldn't tell if this one was a noun or a verb and we did look at a lot of possible names, cute names, clever names, you know, traditional names and we could have gone with any of that stuff but we chose the drive and I think smartly for three good reasons. One was because drive described uh, an attribute, a quality in people that generated success it was part of accomplishment, whether it was an athlete on the field or an entrepreneur in a business or somebody coming into town to, you know, make a success out of themselves. So that was an aspirational quality that we thought was great to have in our name. Secondly, it was obviously a tip of, tip of the hat to the automotive industry, which was so important to the upstate of South Carolina, had been such an important factor in the renaissance, uh, the economic development challenge. But lastly, you know, we wanted the name to have an open-endedness to it where people could sort of fill in the blanks. You know, we wanted to be part of the fabric of the community and we wanted to be associated with excellence and progress and relationships and families. And so we left it open knowing that we could sort of fill it in ourselves and they could fill it in themselves. And they say that ball clubs are owned on paper by men and women, but in the heart by the community. And we wanted to be that kind of a ball club. When we were first developing a name, trying to come up with a name, the very first one that we thought of and that we all fell in love with were the Greenville Joes, paying homage to Shoeless Joe Jackson, who's from here. And we loved the name and we developed a logo that was really, really cool, great looking. We thought it would sell a lot of merchandise uh, and would really catch on in the, in the community. Well, you have to get the name and logo approved by Major League Baseball if you're a minor league team and Major League Baseball was not approving anything that had to do with Shoeless Joe Jackson because of, of the problems that he had run into when he was playing. So that was squashed uh, and really kind of broke our hearts. But we went back to the drawing board and kind of looked at the community. What made a lot of sense? Well, BMW is here and Michelin is here. And we knew from all that the management was saying that, there, that this was gonna be a team that really wanted to have um, an impact in the community, that there was gonna be a lot of drive and a lot of, uh, and a lot of real heart in terms of integrating the team into the community. So the automotive industry being here, the fact that the team was gonna have a lot of drive just led us to that as a name. Myself as a marketing guy, you know, I was, I was, I was fantastically, I just thought the drive was perfect. And then there was, there was this consternation around drive. What does that mean exactly? And then, you know, of course, um, uh, you know, it was it was revealed all of the elements behind the, the, the name. We had a brand new brand um, that we came up with called the, the Greenville Drive. And that brand has always been associated with, you know, I'll just say community centricity. So it was it was always about trying to really be the center point, center uh, centerpiece of, of the community. And over time, I think that um, that positioning has led to um, us kind of being referred to, or floor field, if you will, being referred to as the the front porch of, of Greenville. And so that probably captures our positioning most of all, which is, I think, a positioning that the, the Braves, um, you know, really never could, you know, deliver on.